Hey, what's up, guys? Richard here, back with another episode of Ancient Oracle of Coffin Way. Here we are in Hexagram 26. And this happens to be my personality Earth in uh, cosmic human design. So I do, um, I feel like I am quite familiar with this one. So maybe I could give you guys some, um, you know, extra commentary for this one. The taming power of the great, success through the great, which is mountain over heaven. The judgment, being firm and correct furthers. Not eating at home brings misfortune. It furthers one to cross the great water. In this hexagram, the sage shows us how to successfully counter the ego in another or to respond to incorrect treatment coming from a group ego. Incorrect treatment is defined as treatment that is oppressive, encroaching, arrogant, interfering, or self-righteous. Success through the great refers to the person who, upon being treated unjustly, restrains his anger, saying the inner no, and turns the matter over to the cosmos. This is the meaning of being firm and correct, which you hear all throughout the I Ching. In this way, his anger is transformed into a different form of energy that allows the cosmos to correct the situation through him. The transformed energy is released by the sage at exactly the moment when it has the correct effect on the situation. How it is expressed happens spontaneously, without any effort or intention on the person's part. A person may receive this hexagram, for example, when he is being bullied by someone. If he endures this behavior, the bully may only try harder to annoy him and thereby engage the ego in him. The solution lies in saying the inner no, like most of the solutions uh, mentioned throughout this book, or if appropriate, an outer no to let the bully know in a straightforward way that his behavior is unacceptable and incorrect. If he keeps the ego from becoming involved and asks the cosmos for help, everything will then be furthered. Another example is the envious testing a person may experience from others upon freeing himself from his dependence on the collective ego. The testing is done to see if he can be driven to defend himself. It succeeds only if he allows himself to become angry. Again, the answer is to say the inner no to the testing and to turn the matter over to the cosmos. It furthers one to cross the great water, refers to a person's engaging the help or transformation to bring about the correction. This helper is always engaged through saying the inner no and turning the matter over to the cosmos. The taming power of the great, the traditional name of this hexagram, refers to the conditioning process carried out by the collective ego through threats and punishments. This hexagram is an extension of hexagram nine, which is the taming power of the small, where the taming is done by the more subtle means of flattery and reward. The purpose of all taming is twofold. One, to deprive the person during childhood of his natural defense, which consists in his ability to say both the inner and outer no. And two, to appropriate his cosmic virtues and turn them into social virtues in order to tie him to the collective ego and its institutions. In the first case, the taming is done by threats and punishments during times when the child correctly says no to unjust treatment. In the second case, the taming is done by first denying that the child possesses cosmic virtues, such as honesty, loyalty to his inner truth, and kindness, and then telling him that he needs to develop these virtues. And to legitimize this taming process, his animal nature is described as the source of evil in the world. After making him lose confidence in his cosmic virtues, his natural honesty, for example, is contorted into saying what is socially correct. His natural loyalty to his inner truth is turned into a loyalty to the institutions of the collective ego. And his natural kindness is converted into a non-discriminatory kindness that is, he is supposed to show to everyone. The statements, threats, and punishments that are used to condition the child create doubts and fears in his psyche that disable his various natural abilities. Among the threats that create such fears are the commandments, you must that threaten horrible punishments, extending to eternal suffering after death. These statements and threats invariably connected with spells and poison arrows remain in the person's psyche long after childhood and until the day they are removed through deprogramming or de-spelling. They make the person doubt his original goodness and his natural capacity to get along in life. Further effect of these fears is to transfer the person's chi energy to the collective ego and to those who represent it, endowing them with power. Since these spells and poison arrows also block the flow of chi energy to various parts of the body, especially those parts to which punishments have been applied, 
these parts are unable to get their needed chi nourishment. They are, so to speak, unable to eat at home, which brings misfortune in the form of ailments, illness, or exhaustion. Not eating at home can also refer to a situation in which a person is not able to get his chi nourishment in his present relationship because there is no true interconnection between the partners. When this is the case, withdrawing from intimacy with the partner is the correct response. Not eating at home can also point to a person's being blocked from receiving chi energy directly from the cosmos. To compensate, he overeats. This indicates that he is under a spell which may consist of negative self-assessments such as I'm not lovable or not even the cosmos could love a person like me. Or it may consist in, of self-punishing or self-blaming phrases such as I don't deserve anything good. On the one, dangers at hand, it furthers one to desist. Anger is a natural emotion evoked by injustice. This line warns about allowing the ego to seize the anger, which would turn it into a dangerous force. This happens when the person assumes that there's no help from the invisible world or disbelieves in its existence and that he needs to use the anger energy to defend himself. This will cause the cosmic army to withdraw. The correct response to feeling anger arise in us is first to recognize that we need help from the cosmos. Second, we say an inner no to the perpetrator. Third, we turn the anger over to the cosmos. This enables the cosmic helpers to transform and store the anger energy in us until the optimal time comes for it to be expressed. This happens only after the ego in us has been thoroughly displaced. Then the sage acts through us precisely as needed to correct the perpetrator. This line also is a warning against self-confidently intervening on behalf of another who has been treated unjustly. A person may even think it is his duty to step in and defend the other. However, however such an action was only, would only result in his taking on the other's fate because he is acting from a human-centered view and the assumption that no help from the invisible world is available to that person. It furthers to desist is saying it is a hands-off situation. Of course, we're not talking here about the intervening on behalf of children, animals, and otherwise innocent parties that occurs spontaneously. There is a difference there. You know, just because someone's, you know, being treated unjustly, you know, that may be part of his fate that, that the cosmos has dished out, you know. And if you intervene on behalf of that person, then you're going to take on that fate yourself. Yeah, so be careful there. The help given in a hands-off situation needs to be restricted to asking for help from the cosmos and from the sage that resides in the presence of both the offending person and the victim. And remember this, guys, the sage resides in the presence of every person and can be called upon in any situation to help. And will help. Line two, the axle trees are taken from the wagon. The wagon is a metaphor throughout the eaching for the helpers and their activities in our lives. Here, however, the helpers are unable to move and fulfill their functions. The axle trees are a metaphor for a person's ability to see the sage as existing both for himself and for another. Through this ability, he calls upon the sage during times of difficulty, as mentioned in line one. However, under the influence of the collective ego, a person is deprived of this knowledge and ability through being trained to see people as either good or evil. Through this conditioning, the axle trees, which are the stationary supports for the moving parts, the wheels, have been removed. That is to say, the cosmic principle of attraction upon which the movement of the two wheels is based has been violated, causing a fate. The one will in this metaphor is the person who can draw the other into regretting his deed by calling upon the sage in that person's presence. This line is saying that so long as people view others in terms of good or evil, their lives remain bound up in struggle and adversity. This line can also refer to a person who has been unjust to others and consequently is experiencing a fate. The line is saying that one must not interfere with that fate by dwelling on his unjust action for that would involve one in his fate. So don't dwell on unjust actions. Line two, a good horse that follows others, awareness of danger and being firmly correct furthers. Practice chariot driving and armed defense daily. 
it furthers one to have somewhere to go. All right, what does this one mean? A good horse that follows others is a reference to a domesticated horse, which has been trained to follow other horses and to adapt without resistance to what its master wishes. This metaphor obviously refers to training people to following the collective ego. This is done by equating being good with being a good follower, either of the ideas and values of the collective ego or its acknowledged leaders. This line warns a person against the danger of acting in conformity to the values of the collective ego, and in particularly to its prohibition against saying no, either inwardly and outwardly to its values and customs. An important part of a person's development is the reclaiming of his ability to correctly say the inner or outer no. Being firmly correct can be saying that, that it is correct and essential to say the inner no, even if it is to someone we wish to excuse for his incorrect behavior. Practicing chariot driving and armed defense daily calls a person to restrain his anger and not allow the ego to take hold of it and use it for its purposes. It furthers one to have somewhere to go as counsel to find a way to leave the scene of discord, both inwardly and outwardly. When a person is firm in remaining disengaged from turmoil, he is always helped. Awareness of danger addresses how a person is to relate to another who is unjustly reproving him for not having conformed to the rules of the group we by retreating and disengaging. Thereafter, the ego and the other can only lose energy. The person encroaching may employ other arguments to draw him back into defending himself as by attacking his lack of kindness, consideration, sensitivity, et cetera, but these should be ignored. All these arguments seek to trap him in false feelings such as guilt, which would distract him from seeing the incorrectness of the demands being made on him. The person being mistreated needs only hold to his own central truth and not allow himself to fall into reasoning about it. Awareness of danger additionally warns against being drawn off the central point of inner truth, which he feels by arguments that seek to divert him into defending what he thinks. Practicing chariot driving in this instance means keeping his energy firmly directed towards that point. It furthers one to have somewhere to go in reference to the situation means knowing when to stop. Once a person has secured his point, he needs to desist and go no further. When he has achieved success, of course, with the help of the helpers, it is important not to gloat, but instead allow the other to save face. This is done by not engaging the other's pride through self-righteousness. Line four, the headboard of a young bull, great good fortune. The young bull is a metaphor for an inexperienced person whose anger presses to be released. The headboard is a metaphor for the restraint achieved by turning the anger over to the cosmos and its helpers so that it can come to expression in the correct way at the correct time and in the process break spells that are active in the situation. Great good fortune and cosmic harmony results from turning one's anger over to the cosmos. The traditional interpretation of this line has to do with taming a person's animal nature through rigorous discipline. The headboard stands for the various threats made by the collective ego against those who resist its discipline. It threatens to apply progressively harsher punishments depending on the level of resistance proceeding to the complete oppression of his nature if necessary, which is the function of the headboard. And you see, I love how all these hexagrams and lines have like two different meanings, a causal meaning and a collective ego meaning. The line can also concern a person who is judging others as good or evil, right or wrong, those putting spells, the headboard and poison arrows on them. He does this because of a spell cast upon him in an early childhood, that he is guilty for having an animal nature. And animal nature, by the way, includes all parts of his nature that he sees as lower or inferior. The nature of this guilt is so unbearable that it has caused him to project it outside himself by judging other people's natures or parts of nature itself. The net effect is a back and forth blaming and casting of spells. Line five, the tusk of a gelded boar good fortune. This line, like line three, contains the false implication that it is necessary to geld or take away a person's true nature on the pretext that his animal nature is the source of evil. This idea gives rise to the kinds of discipline that aim to separate mind from body and thus produce the disembodied spiritual person. <laughs> the disembodied spiritual person. 
Such divisions of a person's nature into spiritual and animal parts destroy his original wholeness, upon which his health and well-being are dependent. Receiving this line may indicate that a person's illness is due to this false separation and demonizing of the body. The belief that one's animal nature is lowly disables various senses that a person needs to complete his common sense. It is this common sense sense which enables the transformations that bring him chi energy which is his life force from the cosmos his animal nature can be restored to to its healthy functioning if he rids himself of the false phrases and images that slander it the gelded boar can also refer to the person who through punishments and threats administered during childhood has had his ability to say the inner no represented by the tusk blocked by not being able to say the inner note to others, his natural defense system is disabled so that he is constantly subjected to their encroachments. Also, by not being able to say the inner note to the ego in himself, he is blocked from receiving chi from the cosmos. The block is a poison arrow that needs to be eliminated. The tusk is also a metaphor for a person's ability to draw the helper of transformation through saying the inner note. Is also a metaphor for his ability to store the energy he receives from the cosmos when he suffers an injustice. Good fortune here refers to regaining possession of this tusk. Line six, one attains the way of heaven, success. This line refers to a person who is treated unjustly. Because he restrained his anger and turned it over to the cosmos, it has been transformed. This has allowed the sage to, to correct the perpetrator through a spontaneous action by the injured person. The way of heaven, although the word heaven is a misnomer, refers to the transformation that has taken place due the, to the correctness of that response. The way of heaven, turning your anger over to the cosmos. All right, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, many more of these to come. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.